Hello, thanks for stopping by StampsToDieFor.com. My name is Patsy Wagoner and I am excited to share with you today another technique how-to. Hope you enjoy it. Last week I promised you some watercoloring techniques, so today we're going to show you to how to do some watercoloring, how to get this shading, and what type of paper to use. First, you're going to need a, a Stazon ink pad. Um, Stazon is called that just because of that. It's, it's a Stazon, it's a solvent-based ink, very waterproof. And we are using 140 pound cold press watercolor paper. It's the only watercolor paper that Stampin' Up! sells. And one of the reasons they've chosen um, the 140 cold pressed is because it works the best with all of our watercolor mediums. For this project I'm using a watercolor aqua painter and even though my tip is a little colored it's not going to affect any of my paint because it's clean. These you fill with just regular tap water this unscrews, you just run in some water, and you're good to go. You always start with the lightest color first. Now, I'm going to squeeze my ink pad. Stampin' Up! has designed their ink pad so that you can squeeze them and get this little pooling of uh, ink there. And we want to create some shading. Now, we're pretending that the light is coming from the left on this project. Most of the time I pretend it's coming from, the light is coming from the right, but since he's looking this way, we're going to have him kind of like he's looking in the sun. Now sometimes I like to keep a little bit of a white area, which I forgot to do there. Um, you want to omit a little area to give you some depth. So we're going to go in and we're just picking up the ink um, out of our ink pad there. Now I've pre-done this because part of the trick is letting it dry between colors. And so I have let that dry a little bit and now I'm taking my soft suede and I'm going to go in here and color on this side that I've decided is where the shading is going to be. And so that is the side that's going to get a little darker. Now I keep a little tissue, normally a paper towel, but would you believe today I'm out of paper towels in the house? I've checked every room. We usually have them in three rooms, and apparently I haven't been paying attention because there's none in any room. And I'm going to take a little bit of chocolate chip and go just along the edge to give even some more depth. Now if you get too much color on there you can go in and just you know take your aqua painter and then you're going to go in and kind of blend those colors together like that. You're just going to keep adding color until it's the desired color that you want. I'm going to take a little red cherry cobbler and put just on the right sides of this scarf, giving it again a little bit like it's shaded. And then blending those colors together so they don't look like they're like you got this big line in them. You want it to blend together so you just squeeze out a little more water and you're good to go. Now when you're done doing the main part of your project you can give it a little shadowing effect. I'm using this smoky slate. You can also use a really really soft blue but we're going to go in and we're just going to create a shadow on the right side of him with our gray. And again, you're going to just kind of blend that into the paper so that it's not one solid edge. And that's what 
why watercolor paper works because you know it allows that bleeding to take effect and you just keep going at that until you have the desired effect that you want now I'll go back to my finished one here you can see um, the little bit of shading on the outside and how if you let it dry in between coats you can get it darker and darker anyway that is this week's technique how to be sure to hop over to um, www.stampstodiefor.com and download your free little watercoloring tutorial. I hope you enjoyed this week's technique how to.